Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Wednesday, it is July the 13th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we do, coming off the heels of the conversation with, of the Lord Jesus Christ with his disciples, and the issue of unforgiveness in the hearts of uh, married couples, the disciples come along and ask him a, um, a very good question um, in light of what the rebuttal in, that Jesus has given. Uh, and Jesus is going to give them a very good answer. And it's one that we uh, sometimes find hard to hear, uh, but it is necessary for those who need to hear it to hear it. And so he comes along and says these words in uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 10. And his disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, is it not good to marry? So is it would it have been better for them not to marry uh, than to end up in a marriage that, that, uh, that, that, will, that doesn't work properly, that isn't function the way it should and ends in divorce, which causes her to live in adultery and causes him to live in adultery, would it not just be better if a man uh, would not marry at all? This is how serious marriage and that institution is to God. He's very serious about marriage and, and how we're to display the love of Christ in his church uh, through that picture of marriage and his, his desire uh, for us to forgive and, and live in forgiveness. Um, in that relationship. And so his disciple says, well, wouldn't it have been better basically if just not to marry? And then he said these words, but he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given. So he says, what I'm about to say, not everybody can handle, not everybody can take it, but this is the reality. And so always we, we talk about how the Lord, you know, how the Lord has everybody, someone for everybody. And we talk about how, you know, the, 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 the um, sexual relationship is the most intimate, deepest part of our relationship, which is a lie from the pit of hell. It's what's caused so much sexual immorality to run rampant in our society. Uh, sex is a gift from God uh, to help bring about um, the uh, procreation of, of more human beings made in his image for his glory, for uh, the future of of the kingdom of heaven, um, but in reality, uh, that is the main reason for the physical relationship is procreation. Now, in that, he gives us uh, certainly some benefits that come from that, uh, but it is not necessary to have a right relationship, and it's not even necessary uh, to be married. It's not even necessary to have someone else in your life. There is, It's not true that everybody has someone out there for them. Uh, and, and he's about to get to this, but he says, but listen, not everybody's going to be able to handle this truth, okay? And so just know that that's, that's something that Jesus understood about mankind. And so he says, um, for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, which means they don't have the uh, physical ability to procreate. They don't have the physical ability to reproduce. And, and most of the time, uh, these kinds of men, especially in the early ancient days, would be put over um, the households of, of royalties where they would take care of all of the, the uh, young ladies in the house, uh, the, the, the daughters of, of those who um, um, were in great power, uh, so that they would not um, um, bring on to the scene a, a chance or a problem uh, in having a child uh, that would then challenge the throne. And so they would go and find these ones um, that uh, that were eunuchs from birth, and they would put them in great positions of power because they knew that they weren't going to be able to have offspring that would challenge their rule. Also, if they couldn't find someone in, in that regard, then they sometimes would make them uh, that way. And here's what he says here. For some eunuchs are, are those which were born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And so he says, some uh, come out, the, out of the womb and, and they can't and don't have the ability to procreate. There are some that are made that way by men, and so they would uh, castrate uh, the men you know, so that they could uh, fully uh, uh, trust them in that regard uh, in in the in their in their steed. And so, uh, but then he says these words. He says some are are made of men, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. And so he says there are some who have chosen to abstain. They don't have to have that relationship to be fulfilled, unlike most of the rest of the world who feels like that's the only way that I can uh, be fulfilled is if I enter into that kind of relationship. Well, <clears throat> while that is the case for Moses, the Lord Jesus Christ says, 
Uh, it is not good for man to touch a woman. That's what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says. It is not good for a man to touch a woman because once that physical touch begins to happen, then we know that the physical um, um, chemicals begin to flow and, and things uh, come about uh, that, that God has only permitted in the realm of marriage. And so he says, before you're married, you ought not to touch a woman because it's going to cause you to fall into sin. This is very serious with God. And so he says, but if you cannot handle yourselves, then let every man so take himself a wife. And so you you can't be messing around and having sex outside of marriage. That's a terrible thing. Uh, but uh, but but nevertheless, in this context, he's saying, listen. He said there are some who are saying, listen. If I get married, I'm going to be I'm going to be tied down, and I'm not going to be able to do my 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 life before the Lord very well. Because now my and First Corinthians talks about this how my um, my devotion is divided between my wife and the kingdom of heaven and the work that I'm supposed to be doing there. And, and so there are some who, who do not need uh, this relationship. That relationship with the Lord is enough. And But remember what Jesus said. Okay? He, and remember, he, Jesus said this, so we know it's true. And he says, not all men can receive this saying. Not all men can. But there are some, like Paul the apostle, who would say, I wish that all of you were like I am, which meant he said that I was single. I wasn't bound and, uh, to, to family and, and relations like that. He was bound only to the kingdom of heaven. And thankful that he was because... Look at what uh, God was able to produce uh, through him by the Holy Spirit. I mean, a third of our New Testament and, and, and one of the greatest uh, disciples to us as Gentiles, uh, probably the greatest disciple to us or apostle to us uh, as Gentiles. And so his, his heart was fully devoted to the work and the message of the kingdom of heaven. And so he says, and he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So in other words, not everybody's going to be able to receive it, but it comes back down to this issue. This is how serious marriage is with God and how serious you ought to be able to forgive and heal and reconcile in marriage because if you don't do that and you just divorce for any reason, well, then you're in a state, a constant state of adultery before God. doesn't matter if you've been released by the law and the state, but God says, no, I still hold you bound to that relationship. You chose it and you went after it and you, you, you uh, made it happen and now you're responsible for it. And sadly... Uh, we don't take it that serious today, uh, but God does. But he comes along and says, listen, not everybody needs somebody. Not everybody has to have that relationship. Some have some have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. They devoted themselves wholeheartedly, but not I realize not everyone is able to do that. But he says, man, if you can receive it, receive it. If you can't receive it, then by all means, get married. Uh, but do it in a way that pleases God in the way that you uh, work with one another for the goal of becoming one flesh, not two individuals. And so I pray today that this word encourages you about the seriousness of the relationship of marriage coming off the heels of divorce and um, of the discussion of divorce that Christ has had here. And so, oh, I pray that uh, that we see marriage rightly from God's perspective and uh, and that we see the physical relationship rightly from God's perspective. And in doing both of those things, we'll bring glory to his name. And so I pray you go forth today mildly in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I pray that you are encouraged.